And so women's issues are different from men's issues. Men have challenges that women don't face. All right, because we're made differently. So I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today. God's original intent is for man to be the priest of the house. The priest of the house. I remember my dad. We wake up early, 5 a.m. My dad is the one that will wake us up, not my mom, my father. And you will have to come downstairs and pray. And I hated it. I didn't like it. I'm telling you, because I love my sleep. I was such a sleeper. But you've got to come downstairs and pray. And when we're going to church, when people are dressing up and doing all the whatever they're doing, my father will leave you. You won't even know when he's left because we're running late. Instead of him shouting, screaming, he's just left. And then you get to church, you see my dad. He's already singing hymns and we're strolling in late commas, you know? He, he doesn't do late coming, but he won't hassle you. He will just leave you. You will get the message, silent messages. That's what he gave. So that's even more than shouting because when next time I'm making up my mind that no, I'm going to go. We're all going to go with that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so I want to encourage you men that Jesus loves you. He didn't just place Adam in that garden to just relax and have a party. He didn't just place him there to have a party and just be relaxed. He gave him responsibility. And I, I don't know which church I've been, where I hear pastors preaching to men consistently. We need it. We need mentors today. A lot of men don't have spiritual fathers. But a lot of women have spiritual mothers. And the mothers are even fathering the men. And so, men, I'm calling you today that the whole earth is yearning for your manifestation. The Bible says the earth is yearning for the manifestation of the sons of God. You are a son of God. On this Father's Day, I encourage you. We sang that song, I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in favor. I'm walking in miracles. Walk in the power of the knowledge of God. Walk in the miraculous power of God. Walk in the, in the favor of God, in Jesus' mighty name. So God put Adam in the garden to tend that garden. That's where he will find fulfillment. That's where he will find pleasure. Men are not, look, a woman can be at home and, and they will not get depressed because they're always doing something. A man wants to go out there and be doing things. That is how God created that man. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that whatever you lay your hands upon, it shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will not struggle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you first with Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have I not commanded you? Please bear with me, women in the house today. I'm going to address a majority of this message to men, but you can take it. Sandra, I was wishing uh, your, 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 your blessed man a happy Father's Day. Hallelujah. Amen. Have I not commanded you, says Joshua 1.9, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is the message for the men. God is speaking to Joshua as he was leading the nation of Israel into the promised land. God is speaking to you men today as you are leading your families in your homes. Don't abdicate your responsibility to other people. We must take responsibility. It is what God designed. It was his original intent and it will come to pass in Jesus' name. And the responsibility of that man is to gather his children and teach them to pray. Teach them the word of God. Speak the word of God to them. Hallelujah. And at this time, Joshua's mentor, who was Moses, had died. So Joshua must have felt alone. He felt fear. He was on his own now. There was no more Moses. So God spoke to Joshua as to serve as an encouragement in this time that he's leading his children. Many men can feel afraid with a level of responsibility to pay bills, to raise the children, to support the wife, to, to lead the home, to guide the home. We need Jesus. No man can do it on their own. 
And so God spoke to Joshua. Have I not commanded you? It's a commandment. Today on Father's Day, the Lord is speaking to you, Brother Falabi, Brother John, and all the men in the house. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage, which means that challenges will come your way. The responsibility of leading the children of Israel, who are not easy to lead anyway, by the way. And you may have children that are troublesome. You may have a family that is challenging. The Lord is speaking to you this morning. Be strong and of good courage. On this Father's Day, we encourage you. Be strong and of good courage. Don't be afraid. The word of God says, do not be afraid. You have not been given the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. A man with a sound mind will not fall into the temptation that Adam fell into. God had already given the instruction in the Garden of Eden. The Lord spoke there. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And he gave them instructions, don't eat of this particular tree. Don't eat the fruit of it. I'm speaking to some men out there. Don't eat the fruit out there that God says don't eat. Some men fall into temptation. They want to have a wife and a concubine. Solomon died. I can't tell you where he is because I don't know. He had, is it 300 wives and 700 concubines? Or the other way around. There were too many. What are you doing with 300 wives? That is a killer. I'm speaking to men out there. Don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself. Because women are powerful. By the time Eve came to, 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 to dangle the apple before Adam, he didn't think he just ate it. Instead of him saying, no, I'm not going to eat of this. The Lord said, no. Whatever God says no to, men, please say no to it. Please say no to it. God has put you there for a specific reason. He has positioned you. You see, the thing is that when we don't have mentors, we don't know our position. We don't know if a father is not fathering a child, a son, a daughter, they don't know who they are. Other people will define them. That's why children join gangs. If the home is failing, the children will look for a different type of family out there. And the gangs don't look at, like gangs. The devil don't look like the devil. He comes as an angel of light. So they will promise them lovely designer shoes. They will promise to take them out, to give them some money. And because there's no love at home, they will think they're finding love outside. God is calling us to be responsible. And I'm not saying the dads are irresponsible. Please don't read it negative. Please take it in the spirit of humility this morning. I know I'm a woman, but please receive it in the spirit of Father God. Amen. So the Lord is saying this morning, fathers, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go, wherever you will go as a man, God will be with you. What business are you doing? God is already with you. Just know that the father is still in control. You will never lose control when you know who you are. When you know who has called you, you will never lose control because God doesn't lose control. So in your time of fear, be encouraged. Don't be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you. Amen. The second verse, the second, uh, uh, the second word that I will encourage you with is in Psalm 1 verses 1 to 3. Psalm 1 verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf, leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Men and women, please take this word, but I'm speaking it to men this morning. And so the picture here is that when you as a man delight yourself in the Lord, this is powerful. God empowers you. And that's why the, 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 the enemy doesn't want people to read the Bible. 
If you are not reading the Bible, you will not teach your child to read the Bible. If my dad was going to punish me in those days, he will ask me to go and memorize Psalm 91. You know how long that is. That to me was more than a king. I will be crying. I'll sit in my room and cry. Psalm 91, I can't know it off by heart. Even the other day, I forgot it and I read it all the time. <laughs> that only with your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked. I was thinking, why did I forget that? I speak it every day. Yeah, because I'm just a human like anyone else. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm encouraging you men, delight yourself in the Lord. Read the word of God. Memorize the word of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says his delight is in the law of the Lord. You will always take the counsel of the ungodly if you don't take the counsel of God. And the counsel of God comes from the word of God. The word of God counsels us, leads us, guides us. And we need that. Otherwise, friends will be guiding you. Ungodly men will be guiding you. If you go and look for advice in the wrong place, you will lose your home. You will lose your family. You will lose your children. Because those people giving that advice, they're not even true friends. So the man who rejects godlessness and follows the ways of the Lord has tremendous blessings to follow. Men of God, do you want to be blessed tremendously? Then reject godlessness. Reject it. Say no to it. When your friends come and they offer you, you don't want a drink. But because of them, you, you want to feel cool. That means we're pleasing man and displeasing God. That is what the Bible, for me, it counsels me that I should stay away from godlessness. So like a giant tree, you will be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Fathers, I speak it over you. You will be fruitful in the name of Jesus as you delight yourself in the Lord. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law, he meditates day and night. I'll give you an example. My father was the first one to get born again in our family. 1974, he was still in the police then. And he got born again whilst on his uh, uh, travels. And he would come home and the Bible is always in front of him. As a child, I thought that was so boring. So I'm always looking at him like, oh my gosh, that is so boring. I mean, he's just reading the Bible all the time. I dare not say it to him, but I'm thinking it. He's not going to beat me or anything. But I keep thinking, ah, this man is so boring. You know what I mean? People are partying and enjoying themselves. My dad is just reading the Bible. But a day came when his faith would be tested. You never know when your trial will come. And it's good to prepare. Get the word of God in your system. Get the word of God in your heart. Let it be kept in there because a rainy day is coming. And one day we were in our bedroom. Myself and my older sister were cracking jokes. Instead of using a toothpick to pick her tooth, she was using a, 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 a pin to pick her tooth. And as she laughed, the pin went straight down. She swallowed the pin, yeah. She swallowed the pin. And I saw it happen. And as a young child, I don't think I was more than maybe 13 or something. I ran to my mom. Thank God for praying mothers and fathers. I ran to my mom in the living room. <gasps> my sister swallowed the pin. She swallowed the pin. And my mom was so composed. So I believe I, 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 I got this spirit from her because she's never moved about things. Although maybe her, she's like a duck. Her feet are swimming underneath there, but she's not showing it. And uh, my dad began to pray. And uh, they took my sister to the hospital. God doesn't say don't go to the hospital. Just stand on the word and keep standing. And so they took her to the hospital and they said then that um, she would have to be eating bread and cotton wool together to trap the pain. They didn't do any operation. They were not panicking about it. And she was eating bread and cotton wool the first day, the second day, the third day. I can't remember what day it was. And we had to check the other side when she goes to the toilet. Yuck. And so 
One day came. My dad had been praying every day. We would gather together and pray over this issue that the Lord will bring it out safely. I wasn't still born again, but he was the only born again amongst us then. And I'm telling you, one day my sister looked and there the pin was as black as ever. That pin came out without any puncture. That pin came out without any operation, anything. She wasn't, it wasn't stuck in her throat. It didn't puncture any intestine. It didn't do anything. And so all glory to God. Why am I sharing this today? Because the word of God was so deep inside my father that he had confidence in God that the Lord God of Israel will deliver. That the Lord God of Israel will be there as a father. And indeed, he continues to be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we don't know what God is preparing us for, men of God. And we need you. We need you, men. Some men might say, well, I don't have time for that. We need you because the Lord created you for humanity. The Lord created you to be the head and not the tail, not to have an ego. Park the ego. That ego is what is disturbing a lot of men. They don't want to do this because I am this. No. Let's just humble ourselves under God's mighty arm and he will exalt you. Don't worry about what people think because the problem, the issue is what people are thinking. If I sit down here and start thinking of what people think or what they say, I will not be here. I will not be doing what God has called me to do. And so as you put your, as you delight yourself in the Lord, you will be like that giant tree, that type of man that is fruitful, steadfast, alive and thriving. You will be fruitful, steadfast, alive, and you will be thriving. God wants the men to thrive. When I was in the Methodist church as a youngster, all I saw were men all over the place, like the days of old. And I'm not saying that women are insignificant because God has really empowered women. But we are praying that the men will arise and shine. That's what we're praying. We're looking for men pastors that will speak the truth, that will live in truth, that will be steadfast, that will not live a lie. But men that live in the truth of the word of God, praise the Lord, they will not wither when the heat of difficult times come. Because difficult times will come. That man will not wither who is delighting himself in the law of the Lord. When the heat comes, because heat comes. You know, some men, what they do is when the heat comes, they start blaming. Ah, who brought the heat? Somebody let the door open so it's too hot, you know, the window. No. You will go through the furnace of affliction, but you will come out as gold in the name of Jesus Christ. You will come out as gold. It's a refiner's fire. We have to go through. Disappointments will come. All sorts of issues will come. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your leaf will not wither. Men of God, in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 118 is my next encouragement for you. Psalm 118, verse 6. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise your holy name. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 118, verse 6, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Don't be afraid where you are right now. Whatever the challenge is, what can man do to you? So don't worry about what men are thinking, what this one is thinking. Well, sometimes I don't like to dwell. I'm that kind of person. I don't want to think what they're thinking, what they're, whatever they're thinking, let them think it. Whatever they're doing, let them do it. There's a shoemaker. The name of his business is let them say. Let them say. When we were younger, if you took your shoe to the shoemaker in Nigeria, You'll see, let them see. He didn't care whether they called him a shoemaker or not. He's making his money. He's paying his bills. Hallelujah. He's not proud. Let them say what they want to say. But you be that man of God and know that the Lord is on your side. The Bible says, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The worst they can do is talk about you. What can they do? There's nothing else they can do. You just be who you are in Christ. Be your handsome self. Be your beautiful soul self. Don't conform. Don't want to be like them. 
Jesus is already your friend and God will bring friends to you if you're lonely because this life is quite lonely now. People are stuck at home. Things have changed. We pray for those who need genuine friends that the Lord will bring men that will be real friends to you, men that are God-fearing, men that live in truth and in integrity, men that are steadfast, men that you can speak truth with one another because a lot of men don't want to hear the truth. A lot of humanity, really, all of us. But we have to come to that place where we want to hear truth. Praise the Lord. And when you're feeling vulnerable, I want you to know that the Lord is on your side. If you're feeling like a failure, the Lord is on your side. Don't worry. The Lord is on your side. Have you got a relationship with the Lord? Exactly. If you have, then what can any man do to you? If you have a relationship with Christ, your heavenly father, no man can do anything to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is what Daniel knew. Daniel knew his God. The Bible says those who know their God shall be strong. They shall be strong. When you don't know God, you know, I can tell when people are talking, I can tell where their relationship is with the Lord because of the level of their conversation. When something happens, they freak out. It's because the word is not engrafted. It's because the person is not rooted. Because when you are rooted in Christ, nothing will be shaking. You will be like a palm tree, like that tree that is planted by the streams of water. Don't be afraid. Don't let anything intimidate you to the point where you are emotionally dysregulated. Don't allow circumstances to dictate your emotions to your family. Because when we're feeling heated, when we're feeling anxiety, when we're feeling afraid, we take it out on others. It affects other people that are all around us. And God is saying, I don't want that. I want you to run to me. I want you to trust me. I want you to know that I'm there with you. Don't be afraid. I'm on your side. That is what the Bible says. The Lord is on your side and he will never leave you nor forsake you. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. My next encouragement is in Psalm 119, verse 9. Psalm 119, verse 9. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your words. What is this trying to say? Perhaps you're mixed up in some kind of sin. Perhaps there's sin in the way. Maybe, you know, from time to time you're walking with God and then the next minute, you know, you fall into temptation. And it becomes like a pattern that you cannot escape from. I'm encouraging you today that the only way to cleanse the way is from turning from that sin and going into God's word. Go and read the word of God. Go and meditate on the word of God. It brings deliverance. A lot of things that we know today that we didn't know before, we live our lives better now. Our lives are being impacted and changing by the word of God. Because as we feed on the word, we grow like a little child to milk. As we feed on the word, we become fruitful. I pray in the name of Jesus that our men will bear fruit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our sons will bear fruit because they will be fathers one day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And their children will bear fruit. You will bear fruit in your lives in Jesus' mighty name. Your leaf will not wither. You will not die before your time. You will not be irrelevant. You will make an impact in this generation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our young sons, the youth are looking for men that they can look up to. We're looking for men that we can introduce them to that can be mentors and they will be mentees. And they need men who can live by example. We're looking for men of example, men of integrity. We're not looking for perfect men. We're looking for honest men. We're looking for humble men. We're looking for men who have the fear of God. Hallelujah. And so the Bible says we must take heed. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. Take heed according to the word of God and you will not fall into that temptation anymore. You make up your mind, I want to change. I want to change for good. God is not casting you out. He's saying, come, come as you are. 
and I will make you who you ought to be. I will cleanse you. I will perfect that which concerns you. I will fulfill my purposes in you. So the Bible is saying, don't just read the word alone, but follow the instructions that you find in the word. Don't just read the word, follow the instructions. A lot of men go to church, though women are still more, but we're not seeing what we ought to be seeing in the majority. And so the Bible is saying, get that word inside and it will transform your life. Make it a consistent habit. It's very important to read the word regularly. Don't just be sharing it, read it. Engage with it. Let it transform and change because the word of God has the power to turn around any life. After all, we all were sinners before we came to Christ and he took his time to change us, to deliver us. You know, he was loving us through it all. I want to say to all the men, Jesus loves you. He loves you. He just wants a deeper fellowship. He wants a deeper fellowship with us. And so I'm going to the next encouragement for you in Proverbs 27, verse 17. Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Like I said before, we women, we could be a lot more talkative. It's only in some minor cases that you find men talking a lot. But generally, women are more talkative than men. Men tend to keep things inside. They will bottle it up inside them. And the Bible is telling us here the power of being there for a friend. Uh, my prayer is that men will be there for each other. We're not looking for social men. We're tired of that. When you go to a restaurant, there's loads of men there. They're just not even, you know, you need real men that can encourage you. You need friends that can lift you up. A lot of men don't have that. If I need encouragement now, I can call any one of these ladies here. I can call you, Pat Faith. I can call you, Nikkei. I can call you. I can call you. You can, you can call me. Please feel free. You can text me, whatever you want. You can text me, Pastor Lady, please. I, I want you to call me. And I will give you a call. And we women, you know, we, 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 we know how to encourage one another. But we're praying that more men will arise to encourage each other. We're praying that more men will bond. And the reason why men are not bonding is because of lack of trust. They could have been betrayed in the past. So we're praying for genuine men. I'm not putting men down. I'm encouraging you because we need you. We need you. We need you. When I was young, men were the ushers in the church. You see them collecting offering. You see them shutting the church door and opening the church door. Today, you'll see women carrying stuff. You will see that the women are the ones that are locking the door. I have a friend who is locking the church door today. Where are the men? What is happening here? So we need to arise and pray. We have to pray because the enemy is beating them down with all sorts of issues. Men, don't be discouraged. Go back to God and say, God, I want to serve you with all my heart, with all my being, with everything inside me. Let's come along them. I pray that the other men will come along you who will be able to share and encourage you. You can share together and be encouraged. And the final uh, encouragement, uh, this verse of encouragement that I want to give you is in Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, great men of God. Today on Father's Day, God is saying to you, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. There is a future for that man of God. There is hope for you. God is thinking thoughts of peace and not of evil toward you. This is a valuable scripture to hold on to, men. Any plan that you've made, because men are, you know, men are supposed to be planning. You plan for your children, plan for your home, plan for the future. We're not just meant to cruise. 
this life, be found doing something preparing so that the children can look back and say, just like I'm talking about my dad today. When he died, we opened his wardrobe and there was a note in it with some money, the tailor's bill. I nearly fainted. I said, dad still remembered the tailor's bill and put it in the wardrobe. He wasn't owing any man. Let's not die in debt. Let's not leave our debt for our children's children. Some fathers have left their children in a mess because they've not been there. They've just been there for themselves. When you're sacrificial, you're not thinking about your game. You're thinking about the future, the future generations. Greater love hath no man than this to lay down his life. Life is sacrificial. You will do what is uncomfortable to put food on the table. You will do what is uncomfortable to make sure that your family will not suffer. Today is a different story. As we all know, we can see it all around us. Sometimes the planning that a man has planned can get out of hand. The devil can come and throw the works in it. But I want you to know that God is still thinking thoughts of peace toward you. Don't be troubled by it. Pick yourself up again and begin to run again. We fall many times, but we arise 200 times more in the name of Jesus. And let us teach our sons too. Stumbling is part of life. It's part of our walk. Children don't stumble before they learn to walk properly. We're still learning to walk. Praise the Lord. Your foot will not slip in the name of Jesus. You will be at the right place at the right time. Yesterday, I prayed for, I think it's about eight children that I prayed for yesterday. And it was wonderful to see them, to meet them. They're like my grandchildren. It was awesome. I looked at them and I've been praying for such a day to come. I just didn't know when the Lord will bring it. My young ladies have married now and they have children and their children are like eight and there's still some of them are pregnant, you know? And, and, and God gave me the opportunity to anoint these children one by one. I think the eldest of them will be maybe 10. Very intelligent children. And the Lord began to, to prophesy and to speak into their lives and to reveal who they would become in future. And the Holy Spirit really spoke to them. And they was just so precious. And at the end, when, uh, you know, the parents were praying for me, they came to hold my hands. They held my hands so, so strong. I felt my hands were going to crush, but I'm delighting in it because they're holding on so strong. Oh, your children will lack no good in Jesus' name. They will not lack any good thing in the mighty name of Jesus. They will be great. They will flourish in the courts of their God. They will, they will look up to great mentors, their dads. Yesterday was a pleasure. I saw the heart of God in the, in the lives of these youngsters. God was speaking to them individually. They were not too young to hear. It was awesome. And to God be all the glory. So I want to talk to you about some great men of the Bible quickly. Because there's some great men in the Bible. So I'm going to first and foremost talk to you about Paul, the evangelist and the apostle, the great man of God. This man was awesome. I don't even know whether I can go through a quarter of what he went through. And I'm complaining about what I'm going through, what Paul went through. <laughs> I think I'll be one of those that will go and hide like Jonah somewhere. Because this call is serious. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 11. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Men, be encouraged. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 28. Paul was talking about suffering for Christ, what he went through. He went through so much pain and suffering. Men, are you going through pain right now? Do you think you're suffering? He was talking about suffering in this life for Christ. 
I don't think anybody went through so much more than Paul went through for Jesus. He suffered so much. Let's read it. Verses 23 to 28. He says, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews five times I received 40 stripes minus one. They, they beat him 40 times minus one. That's 39 times. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Above all of what Paul was going through, he was still concerned for the church. What this man is teaching us is to be unselfish, not to be thinking of ourselves alone. A lot of people enjoy the comfort zone. You know, I don't want this. I don't want that. Well, for the sake of Christ, you might have to go through that. You might have to go through that discomfort for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of souls dying. This man was still concerned. He said, I, if I must boast at all, I will boast in the things which concern my infirmity. He says, beside the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern is for all the churches. He's concerned. He said, who is weak? And I am not weak. Are you saying, uh, you know, uh, you're weak? Paul was weaker. He felt weak. Who is made to stumble? And I do not burn with indignation. If I must boast, I will boast in the things which concern my infirmity. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he says, look, I'm not lying to you. This is real. This is real. In my own short walk with the Lord of 30 something years, being in ministry, I can tell you that I've been through hell. I can tell you that I've been through affliction. But I haven't been stoned like that. I haven't been whipped five times. And I've been through what I call hell personally. So what, are, what is Paul saying here? Look at it. With far greater labors, far more imprisonments. He was imprisoned. Sometimes your situation as a Christian might put you in prison. It could even be spiritual. You may not be in a physical prison, but you could be in a spiritual prison where you are being afflicted by the enemy. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews, the 40 lashes less one, 40. If somebody lash you one, we were wrong. But this man 39 times, 40 lashes but one. Five times I received at the hands of the, uh, uh, sorry, three times I was beaten with rods. I don't know what, <laughs> a rod, a rod is a big thing. And they beat him so many times. Three times he was beaten with rods. He was stoned once. Three times he was shipwrecked. The first time I'm shipwrecked, the second time I'm not even going to go on that ship again. I say, Lord, I'm not going, I'm not going. No, you me alone. And Paul, for the sake of the gospel, for the love of Jesus, he went again on that ship and he was shipwrecked again. At that time, I'm coming back to God. That, okay, take me home now. I'm even tired of all this pain. You know, they beat me here. They put a rod on me. And now you now put me in this ship. And this ship now is now you say wreck again. And I'm tired now. Are you crying like that right now? Think about the apostle Paul. And then he said three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day, I was adrift at sea. This man could have drowned, you know. For a whole night and a whole day, he was adrift at sea. Ha. Huh. We will re repent of our complaints. And he says, he says, on frequent journeys, in danger from rivers. He was going to places that you and I can't go. You know, I was thinking about it one day. I said, Lord, you know, let me be honest with myself. So if you took me to a deep village somewhere, 
and they have no comfortable toilet, which I can't stand the dirty toilet. I can't stand anywhere that is not clean like that. How am I going to deal with this? You know, and I'm thinking about myself that, hmm, you like your comfort zone. Then I say, Lord, please forgive me. You know, I'm not testing you. <laughs> In case you might take me there. What am I going to do? Even when I'm traveling any nation, I still take my own personal belongings in case they don't have whatever I need. And look at Paul. He was shipwrecked. He was adrift at sea on frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers. Danger from robbers. And we don't want to be robbed. Some people are not going to Nigeria today because it's a bit turbulent at the moment. They won't go to Sri Lanka or somewhere like that because there's trouble. And the news will put it, don't go to this country because what if God called you to go? What are you going to do? Now, let's ask ourselves serious questions. Men and women of God, what if God called you? What are you going to do? Are you going to trust him? Or you're just going to sit in your comfort zone? God is going to throw some of us out of our comfort zone. You may not go to Iran or Iraq, but when you go out there, when you begin to minister, you might have that experience. I've been shipwrecked in ministry. All sorts of things go on. I've been thrown arrows. All sorts of things go on. When you're in ministry, you've got to set your eyes like a flint on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Men of God, don't allow your heart to fail. What you're going through, Paul has been through it as a man. And you haven't even tasted what Paul has gone through. You still have a roof over your head. I mean, I mean, if I look at some of you now, you know, your cheeks are rosy. They're nice, you know? You're looking nice and handsome. Hmm. What about Paul? Paul's cheek must have gone inside. It must have sunken. Because being adrift at sea for 24 hours, it means that you're not eating nothing. If you went on a fast, you're even complaining. What should Paul do, the apostle? He says, in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people. Are you being betrayed by your people? <laughs> Don't be disheartened. This is in the Bible. This man went through it with his own people, his own family. Family will betray you. Friends will betray you. Ministry co-workers will betray you. All sorts of things going on. Judas betrayed Jesus. That was his very own person. He was a treasurer for Jesus, and he, Jesus was betrayed. So how much more us? We will go through the fellowship of his sufferings. He says, danger from Gentiles, unbelievers will attack you. Danger in the city, danger in the wilderness. This man was not safe. Danger at sea, danger from false brothers, fake Christians, fake sisters and brothers that will tell you they love you, and you're in danger from their lies, their deception. That's why we must seek the Holy Spirit for everything because we don't know who the liar is. They're all amongst us. From false brothers and sisters, I might add. So you need to ask the Holy Spirit, is this person real? Are they from you? Please show me. Reveal who this person is to me. You know, when I meet new people or somebody is saying they want to meet me, I'm constantly x-raying. In my head, I'm saying, Holy Spirit, are they from you? Holy Spirit, what do you think? Holy Spirit, are they from you? Holy Spirit, you know, please just give me insight. Because it's not everybody you want to meet. It's not everybody you want to, it's not everybody. God will send you. Because I don't want to meet the devil, although he comes to trouble me. I kick him out. You kick him out. Kick him out, man. Kick him out. Don't accept it. Don't let him make your manhood like a boy. God wants you to be man. He wants you to arise and shine. Don't let the devil put you down to such a place where you've lost your own confidence. A lot of men don't have any self-esteem anymore. Their self-esteem is in their car, the car they're driving, the house they live in, the job they're doing. In a particular job, they held a men's meeting. Honestly, all the men were talking about is what job do you do? What job do you do? What, do you, what is that? We don't need to know. Please take your job and put it aside. We want you to grow in the Lord. We want you to be fed the word of God. Don't be defined by the material. Don't be defined by that. Be defined by the word of God. This man, Paul, he knew who he was in Christ. He was in toil and hardship through many a sleepless night. This man, he wasn't even sleeping well. 
in hunger and thirst. I told you. In hunger and in thirst, look, his mouth must have been in there, hungry. Even Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, hungry. He must have come out lean, and then the devil came. The devil will come. He was in hunger and fast, often without food, in cold and exposure. Do you know how cold it is sometimes? I was born in the United Kingdom, but I grew up for 15 years in Nigeria. And I enjoyed that heat. But when my parents brought me back to the UK in Birmingham, Birmingham in those days was cold. And where I lived, there's no bus stop for like half an hour's walk. Buses don't come round there because it's full of big houses. And I would be walking my toes. So today, one of my toes is a sign of that cold. The ears, my ears would be crispy like it's going to break in those days. I mean, the world is warmer now. But in those days, things were cold. So think about 1981, how cold it was in Edgbaston, in Birmingham. It was cold. And I'm coming from a hot country. This Paul has been through solitary confinement, cold exposure. I'm complaining then that it's too cold, you know, and my parents weren't listening, so I bought myself a ticket and I ran home. And uh, when I got to Nigeria, I took a taxi and my mom nearly died. I pressed the gate bell because I couldn't take it anymore. It was too lonely, too cold and everything else. And I told them I wasn't coming, but they dropped me anyway for education, you know. So when I went by, what? This child? Yeah. <laughs> and I got fed up. I want to come home. But God had a purpose for my life. That's why you are here now. Men and women of God, that's why you are here. My parents were here in the 1950s. And God brought me back. Wherever the sole of your feet shall tread, that is your inheritance. The, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Nobody owns anything. You think anybody owns anything? No. Maybe Abraham is the one that God even gave all the lands. We're all immigrants. I'm telling you right now. If you go and look at your generations, there might be German here. There might be Romanic there. There might be something. All of us are from different parts of the earth. We just claim what we could. Look in the Bible. People were claiming land all the time. It's for identity's sake. Somebody will say, I'm Anglo-Saxon. You know, I'm this, I'm German, I'm French, I'm that, I'm this. But our father is everything. And the earth is his. And he gave the earth to us. We are children of promise. Glory be to God. That's why we pray. God says, ask of me and I will give you the nations as an inheritance. Ask it of me. It is mine. And I will give that inheritance to you. So wherever you go is your nation. I'm a British citizen of the United Kingdom. Glory be to God, hallelujah, the queen's daughter herself. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And when I go to Nigeria, I'm still Nigerian. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We've inherited the blessings of Almighty God. And God has brought us here now. Let's speak the word into the atmosphere. Let the United Kingdom be born again in the name of Jesus. Yes. Let this great country be born again. Wherever you are, your city, your village, your town will be born again because of your commitment to God, because of your prayer, because of your passion. Paul the apostle was passionate. Men of God, be passionate for the things of God. Don't compromise, don't settle for less. This journey that we see here, I was just an ordinary person, ordinary girl, nameless. I can't even stand in front of a mic. I can't even stand in front of people. I couldn't even stand in front of people. And God chose me as he has chosen you to, to go forth. And he took me by hand. Let him take you by your hand, men of God. It's not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. He will not leave you alone. He will, he will go before you and he will prepare you and he will help you and he will guide you and he will do it through you. He will do it through you. You're not irrelevant, men of God. We say we love you in the body of Christ. We say we need you in the body of Christ. We say we're asking the Lord that apart from all the daily pressures that you feel, that you will be passionate for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
that you will be passionate for the things of Almighty God. That you will be that person that when you get to heaven's gate, on that last day, when the angels come to knock on your door and they say it's time to come home, you will be so glad because you have done everything that God has called you to do. You will be like Paul the apostle. He said, I have run the race. I have fought the good fight. Now there's a crown that is laid be before him. You will be excited. Why? Because heaven will applaud you as you're going home. Well done, man of God. Well done, man of God. Well done, man of God. Don't look at your pain now. Look at your gain for eternity. Don't look at your temporary now. Look at the eternal things that God has prepared for you. Don't look at where you are now. There's a comma there. The journey is still ahead of you. So don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your situation. Don't even look at how much money you've got in your bank because even the money of this world is fading away. But look at Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, the great provider, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Look at him. The power of his provision is always available. If there's nothing out there for anyone, he will make one sufficient for you. He says, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in your weakness. God knows that as a man, you will have moments of weakness. As a woman, you will have moments of weakness. And God is saying, when you let that go, let that weakness go and trust me and come to me and run to me, my power will supersede your power and it will be strengthening to you and it will be made perfect in your time of weakness. So although you are weak, then you are stronger. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, let the weak say that I am stronger. And so you will begin to confess the word of God and say, I am stronger. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in Jesus and lean on him. He is my rock. Hallelujah. You will not be ashamed. You will not be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus Christ today. Paul the apostle now is one of the witnesses of heaven. What a great man of God he was. I want to encourage you, be like the man Paul who did not consider the earthly things as anything, but he looked at it, the eternal thoughts of God. And the eternal thoughts of God is to impact the world. You will impact the world in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The eternal thought of God is to heal the brokenhearted. You will heal the brokenhearted in the mighty name of Jesus Jesus Christ. He said, greater works shall ye do than these. You will do those greater works in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus that any distraction that the enemy may have brought to you is broken today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The plan of the enemy is to distract. That is what he did with Adam. Adam ate that fruit without thinking. He didn't even consider what the Lord and the instructions that God had given them earlier. He just ate because he looked and he listened to Eve instead of listening to the voice of the living God. You will hear the voice of God and you will do the will of God and you will follow the instructions of God. You will not be like Jonah. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will be like Joshua. You will be courageous. You are the Joshua generation. You men of today are the Joshua generation. I prophesy it over you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you will be courageous according to the word of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not be afraid. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will be stronger. You will be of good courage. You will not be afraid you will not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I pray today for you men as it is Father's Day. Marie Makaya Kalamaka Seke, Nebre Makara Maka Shaka Talababa. I pray for your husbands. I pray for your sons that are going to be great men tomorrow. I pray for you men that are with us right now. In the name of Jesus, your foot will not slip. You will not fail in your calling. You will not get to heaven. And the Lord will be asking you, what did you do with your gift? And you'll be looking for one excuse or the other. You would have used your gift for the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus no, 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 no weapon fashioned against your husband, your sons shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, they will fulfill their calling. You will fulfill your calling. In the mighty name of Jesus, the evil hands of the enemy will not reach you. In the mighty name of Jesus, for you have been clothed in righteousness. In the name of Jesus, the shield and buckler is watching over you, is defending you. The Lord is your shield. The Lord is your buckler. The Lord is your children's shield and their buckler. They will not fail. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, 
life. I command every evil hand to be removed by your life. Anything that is stopping the progress of your children's destiny, your son's destiny, your husband, yes, Lord, you men of God, your destiny will not be cut off. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say your destiny will not be cut off. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not be distracted. I rebuke every distraction. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke every distraction. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke every distraction. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I break the yoke of generational curses. In the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke failure. I break the yoke of adultery. Any hereditary father, any hereditary thing, Yes, Lord, massacre from generations past, Father, that is not of you. We break it of their lives right now. Perhaps they have, Father, we just thank you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Masama Kalibaka Sheki. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Their, their hearts, Father God, will not be sick. Your heart will not be sick because hope is deferred. Your hearts will not be sick. I plead the blood of Jesus over your hearts right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over the hearts of your sons, the hearts of your husbands, the hearts of you men that are here right now. I plead the blood of Jesus. I see that the enemy is holding grip. It's like grip in a man's heart. Yeah, I plead the blood of Jesus over your heart right now. I break, Father God, yeah, I break that hold. I break it now in the name of Jesus. Let him go. Let him go in the name of Jesus. Let him be set free. Be set free right now in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Oh, we receive your blessings right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They will not despise your word, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, because your word says, he who despises the word will be destroyed. Yeah, but he who fears the commandment of God will be rewarded. I pray that they will fear your commandments in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this great man. Sickness will not take you away. I rebuke sickness in your lives in the name of Jesus. I rebuke sickness right now. You will do the will of God. The Lord loves you. And you have pray that you will that you will feel the presence of the Almighty, the presence of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you will feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Lord, touch them. Touch them. Touch their hearts, oh God. Let them feel your presence this morning. Yes, Lord. And carry your presence, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, where there needs to be a change, a turnaround, I pray for humility of heart. That, Father God, that change will take place. That submission will take place, Father. We pray for salvation of souls. If any man in your household is not saved, we pray that they're truly saved in the name of Jesus. If any one of your sons are not saved, we pray that they're saved in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over your going out and your coming in. Yeah, accident will not come near you. Evil will not come near your dwelling in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Oh, we praise you. We worship you. Do you know that these are valuable men? Do you know that these are not, they're not a waste? Do you know that the enemy wants to steal, to kill, to destroy? He wants to steal your son, your, 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 your son, your great men of the future. He wants to steal your husband. He wants to steal. He wants to steal their the, the destiny in Christ. He wants to steal your son. That's what he wants to do. And when you say no, and you stand in the gap for your husband, you're standing in the gap for your sons, you know, the enemy will try and attack you, but you're covered by the blood of Jesus. Keep professing the word of God. Keep speaking the word of God, for the word of God is powerful. And you will see change in Jesus' mighty name. You will see change. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Above all, I pray for wisdom. I pray for knowledge. I pray for understanding. I pray that the wisdom of God will guide me, will guide you in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, we say no to stealing your son in Jesus' mighty name. We plead the blood of Jesus over your son right now in Jesus' name. He will not be stolen. No, because we're confident in Christ. He will not be stolen. Christ gave that child to you and that child is yours for eternity. Praise the Lord. Nobody will steal your children from you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We magnify your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm speaking to the men this morning particularly. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior or anyone that is listening to the sound of my voice this morning, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, 
I want to ask you and invite you. Come to Jesus. He's our helper. He's our lover. He's the lover of our souls. And so will you pray after me? And say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today. And I say, I give my heart to you. I repent of all my sins. I ask you to please forgive me. I want to change. I want my life to be turned around. I need your help. Jesus, please come and help me. I ask you to come and be the king of my heart. Come and rule in my heart, in my home, in my life. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. I give my heart to you today. And I say, Father, thank you for accepting me in the beloved of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All God requires is true repentance. That's all. There's no condemnation for you this morning. He loves you. And he just said, come. He says, come as you are. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you all. And thank you for listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.